Hello, everybody. <laughs> What's up, Robert? Hello, back. Hello to Mexico. <clears throat> so I'm just doing this live chat. If anyone had any questions about uh, the last video about the building system or whatever you guys got. But here's what I'm working on now. It's a 16 foot dome. Because of the weather, you can see the snow on the ground. Uh, I'm not doing any construction because I want it to be at least 55 degrees before I do any more cement work. So I'm waiting for some warm weather to finish up. Also, I have a new pump and um, a new mixer pump combo that I'm working on and I'm uh, just waiting to complete that so that I can use the new machine to finish my dome project here. I'm excited about that because the uh, the mixer pump is designed for the Aircrete, the Epic Mix, and all the other cement slurry mixes that I'm making. Uh, it's designed to be able to mix it and to pump it so that I can spray it on or just pump to fill forms or you know like uh these forms here to fill my ring beams you can see i uh was working on the stakes the stakes you see there are for my uh 24 foot dome so i have my stakes in next i'll be putting my wood the wood that i have around and doing my tie back and stuff Hello to Dominican Republic. What state are you building the dome in? Colorado. How can what? How can I build an underground house using aircrete? Um, you're better off building this method because uh, it'll be far safer. I don't know. It depends on how deep on the ground you're trying to bury it, but. Um, I would definitely do a reinforcing structure and then air create on the outside of that as an insulative mix. That's what this is here. This is a structural shell that this here could be buried. I wouldn't worry about anything caving in. This would have the compressive strength for an underground structure. And if I want it, you could put insulation on the outside, but um being underground is insulation uh insulative and you'd have a constant temperature underground so you wouldn't really even need to build use aircrete for an underground structure uh mark is in pana Pen, pa oh okay cool um you could uh you could definitely build I would say build this type of structure. I would feel far safer personally in a reinforced concrete structure for an underground dome. Like this dome here, even larger, you could definitely build this and bury it underground. No question. You just have to dig a deep enough hole. The height on this is twelve feet to the peak. So you figure you'd want at least a maybe a 16 foot deep hole um, 
to build a dome if you were going to build something that high. <clears throat> Does Colorado have building codes for aircrete? There's some counties in Colorado that have no building codes. And so you're allowed to build any type of structure you want. You just have to comply with uh, electrical and plumbing. Um, but other than the electrical and plumbing, the actual structure you can build out of almost any material you want. Uh, but you have to find those counties. I don't. I don't know. That's actually some researching I have to do myself. Uh, that's something I have on my list of things to do is to look up all the different counties, just in Colorado alone, that allow you to build, uh, rather that have no building codes, so you can build anything you want. So I have to do that. the The thing they do have in most of Colorado is a. Uh, minimum square footage you can build without a permit. So you could build an air creek dome that's 200 square feet or less in some counties, so long as it's not, uh, doesn't have running water and electric. So it has to be like just a cabin, which is what I built last year to live in. Uh, the dome that we're staying in now is a, uh, it's actually a little little bit under 200 square feet and um there's no running water or electric so it's just a cabin you know we have a propane heater to keep it warm but otherwise um you can build without a, a building permit here hello from tennessee love your videos thank you antonio uh, and water would be a problem. Water would be a problem. Um, well, water is a problem, but I think I have the solution for it. Uh, I'm just not done testing it, which is to make water from air. And the only reason there's a problem is because of the, the, the stupid law where you can't collect more than 50 or 100 gallons of rainwater for gardening use. Um, so it's crazy, I know, but I figured the way around it is two things. Number one, you can dig a well, which I can't do in my area because it's probably too deep, too much money. Um, and number two is the other thing I'm working on is to make water from air. There are simple machines like a dehumidifier. Like I have one that'll make at least five gallons a day, um, well, not even a day. Well, yeah, during the day, during a uh, eight or a 10 hour period, my dehumidifier will make at least five gallons of water. But I'm working on a system that I have. That's what this giant mound of dirt is. That was to bury my uh, PEX tubing. All right, I'm working on a system where I have PEX tubing buried. And ideally, you want to be buried at least eight feet for geothermal energy. Now, I didn't have eight feet of soil that I can uh, go down because of the rock. So I ended up pushing soil up on top of the PEX tubing. Now, it's not the same, but I figured something's better than nothing. And it's really to test the, uh, test the idea out to use um, geothermal energy to cool water going through tubing that will then come up to the surface to a radiator and uh, the ambient air temperature difference between the outside air temperature and the cool water will create condensation. And the idea is just to collect the condensation 24 hours a day with a little five volt uh, pump. And um, just like your air conditioner or just like a dehumidifier works, you just collect all the uh, droplets of water and it adds up. And that's my idea for create making water from air using geothermal energy. Now you could, like I just mentioned, you could uh, supersize a dehumidifier, but that would take electricity. But say you're in an area that you do have abundant power, then you could simply hook up a dehumidifier and that can go through a filter, obviously. And you could collect that water and just have it constantly running. You know, it depends on how much water you use. But if you're going off grid, like your water needs usually uh, tend to be reduced. 
at least mine were when I moved out here. Um, what would be, uh, that would be great for a small nuclear reactor. <laughs> yeah, it would. Uh, except you want to get away from nuclear power. Let's go with solar, wind. And another thing I'm planning to experiment with next year is going to be earth batteries. They have these earth batteries you can make. And, you know, there's patents out there. And if you make a patent, normally your patent, your idea has to work. So I've never seen it in action. I do know the earth has a, a current, but there's a way to make batteries by mixing different salts and, you know, calciums. And I, I don't know the different ingredients. There's really just two different ingredients that you mix into the soil and you put some rods in. And if you put enough of them, you can get like some serious power, like uh, uh, unbelievable. So I need to do that experiment. I'm just not ready yet. I'm working on building the house first. But um, an earth battery or earth generator, I, I think it goes by both names, earth battery or earth generator. And um, look into that. And if someone's done an experiment or if someone's got the time, please do it. Save me time from doing experiments i just want to do something that works like what i'm doing here with you for you guys um anyway that's all because of uh the nuclear reactor comet from antonio uh i need a dome in southeast arizona do you have suggestions yeah you can either build one the, with the method that i'm using and uh, I don't know if you heard, but I'm working on a mixer pump design that's designed to mix and pump all the different cement mixtures that I use, which would be Aircrete, Epic, and some other latex cements and, and different mortar mixes can be mixed up and pumped and sprayed. So I'm working on that machine because anyone with that machine would have a much easier process in building these domes. Because uh, if you can spray it, uh, spray the cement on and you don't have to do it by hand or one of those uh, other manual mortar mixers, this is pumped through a hose and you can just walk around and spray everything. And, and for aircrete bricks, you can use the hose to fill uh, molds up, you know, having one stationary station where you mix and pump the cement from uh an air creep. so anyway once that machine's done anyone with that machine will have a so much easier of a process to build their own uh dome house or go into business for themselves uh but otherwise besides building yourself you know you can have someone do it I, i'd be willing to do a, a what is it, a consultation not a consultation but uh, since I'm not a contractor, a consultant, I could do like a consulting where I could come out with equipment and help you build your house. I couldn't do it for you, but I think legally I could help you build your house. And so I'd be willing to do that. Uh, Arizona's close enough to me. So if you're interested in that option, um, send me an email to aircreedharry at gmail and... Um, we can talk about uh, me coming out to help you build your house. Uh, again, because I'm not a contractor, so I can't legally build uh, anything for anyone. I don't think. I don't know enough about the laws, and I'm, I'm not trying to get in trouble for anything. Uh, polyethylene with a sealant. Uh, okay. I don't know what that comment... What the? Oh, it's a question... Um, yeah, I guess that would work if, if that's what you feel. Listen, there's a lot of options. I've done a lot of experimenting this year with different cement mixes just, just to get the maximum strength. You know, it's one thing to, to read about cement mixes and look at videos on YouTube of people mixing it. But, you know, until you do it yourself and get that hands-on experience, it's not... The same. So I, I've done that. I've I've done a bunch of different cement mixes and and even some aircrete experiments. I have some more aircrete experiments to do, but um, right now, what I've found for speed of construction, for strength, 
um, is this system here from the experiments I've done with the cement and um, and uh, my Franken dome that I have and all that other stuff. This is the best system, in my opinion, for building yourself a house quickly. Because really, if the weather's right and you have all the equipment on hand and everything ready to go, it won't take more than four or five days to complete almost any size dome. Um, I, it doesn't matter if it's a, a eight footer or a 30 foot dome. It'll be about the same amount of time with the right equipment. And um, it's a really fast process because even this, this is like basically one day's work. Um, if you start early and you get those first coats up because of the special mix that I've been coming up with, the cement cures and dries a lot faster and gets a lot harder, quicker. So um, that's a good thing to help with the speed of construction because on the first day, you want to get at least two coats up. You want to get the first coat to cover that fiberglass mesh and then you want to... Um, after the first coat is on, then that's when the stucco wire goes over it. And then you do another coat to embed that stucco wire. Meantime, that first coat is already set up enough to help support the weight of the cement. And it's really light. You know, the first two coats is um, adds up to about a half inch to one inch thick. So this is a really fast process. And then after that's done... You have your air creep bricks that you can mortar on or you can mix up the Epic. I like the Epic personally because I can spray it on and build up my layers right away. Opposed to having to make air creep bricks, um, you know, ahead of time and having them ready to, to apply. Either way works, um, but my personal preference is the epic because it's much easier to spray on there what we got here hello it's i got a lot of like, glare on my phone it's hard to see some of the names what's that k cabelto mm. i love your content thank you cool did i miss the video on pex tubing geo worm uh geo water collection um uh, I don't, I, I might have made a short video um, on this channel, but look on Off Grid Dome Living. I think I made a longer video on that channel. Uh, I only got like three or four uh, videos on there. Off Grid Dome Living. Um, can I help incorporate TIG into the PEX tubing to get small power tool? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I haven't done enough experimenting yet myself. I just buried everything. And, um, you know, I'm waiting to build a house before I finish those other experiments. Because I also have, uh, besides the PEX tubing buried, I have the 6-inch corrugated tubing buried. And that's also for the air. Now, that I did do a quick little test with. I hooked a blower up during the summertime and i got a, a 20 degree difference in the air temperature uh, going through the tubes um so that was good for cooling now being the proper depth will give you a constant air temperature and so even in the freezing uh, winter you'd get a constant 52 degree air coming out which would be you know warm considered to minus so uh, anyway i haven't done that yet because the house is not finished um what else we got here like a snail i must be missing something there but i'm gonna keep it moving was catching up on progress harry good stuff my dude thanks uh does air crew have a lot of thermal mass so it is warm in the winter and cool in the summer itself no Aircrete, it, it has some thermal mass, obviously, but it's not like this. That's actually the other reason why I'm building with this method, because this first layer of structural concrete has a lot of mass. And 
this is going to be on the inside. This will be the inner layer because on top of this, we'll go, uh, for me, we'll go the epic. We'll go on top of that. And the epic is uh, insulative. And if that were aircrete, it would be very insulative. But the big thing is all the thermal mass on the inside to capture my heat and radiate that heat back. Um, that's one of the benefits of this. Aircrete, you don't have the thermal mass on the inside. Um, it still works great, uh, especially in hot climate areas because it'll keep you cool on the inside. But um, so long as, you know, in the winter time, if you have an aircrete structure and it's winter, you're fine as long as you have a heat going. It's just not going to be as efficient as a house that has a lot more thermal mass on the inside but it'll still be very nice and cozy uh environment Mercury doesn't have right okay so what kind of r value you know i don't know about the r value i've heard different things i've heard anywhere from 1.5 to uh three uh three r value for per inch of aircrete um that's that's one of the aircrete tests I'll, i'm planning I, I have planned my, my idea is to make a uh, basically like a burn box we'll just say for example a square box with a couple of couple of smaller holes on the top of the box where i could put different samples of aircrete and the idea that i this is the idea i have is to basically put uh propane torch in the box so that the box gets super hot and the different samples on top you know i'll be able to uh measure the difference in temperature and anyway that's just an idea i have of how i can do a test to to test the different uh aircrete samples and air and epic and all that other good stuff uh great letting us know how about building the balloon and mesh have a guide well, I do already have on my website, aircreteharry.com, how to build the air form video and and the mesh is the same as the air form. Uh, it's the exact same process for building the mesh as the air form. You just have to get the mesh material. And um, I'll actually I'll actually put a link to where I get the mesh material on Amazon. I'll put that link um uh <clears throat> just go to aircreteharry uh dot com and and you, you'll see there's a link i forgot what what tab it is but on my website you, you, there'll be a link to take you to my amazon page where you could get the mesh i've bought like six different meshes fiberglass meshes from amazon just to test them out they were different prices and uh basically they all turned out to be the same so I just picked the cheapest one, which came out to, I think, $48 for a roll. It was four feet wide and I think 100 feet long. I, f I forget exactly. But um, I'll put that link. I'll add that mesh to my Amazon uh, tool list. Uh, another good thing that I, I don't talk about enough because I haven't made a video yet about it, it is that when you're making aircrete, you want to get yourself a hard water tester. So if you go to aircreteharry.com, one of the tabs on my page, I think on the shop or, or, or aircrete tools, that's the tab. You click on aircrete tools and that'll take you to my Amazon page and you'll see there's some hard water testers you can buy and hard water will mess up your aircrete big time because hard water does not allow foam bubbles to exist. It makes them pop. And um, if you have hard water, and you're making air creep and it's collapsing on you uh that's the reason why because of the hard water it's not about ph it's about the water hardness ph is you know you want to have a good ph but the most important for making air creep is water hardness so uh that just came to mind so i figured i'll let you guys know uh tyler yes our value is relative to bubble size and wall thickness all right thanks for helping me out there <clears throat> I got a lot of glare on my screen. Um, wait, let me try turning my screen a little. Now I'll give you guys a view of the mountain. It's 
oh, it's still a ton of gl glare. All right, back to the dome. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Ben said five to six R per inch. Yeah, I'm sure it's good. If I were going to um, put aircrete on these domes, I am going to be using aircrete on some of the domes. There's going to be a lot of domes. Um, and some of them will have aircrete uh, bricks as the insulative uh, coating on the outside. And um, what was my point? I was about to say something. Oh, yeah. And if I were going to do aircrete bricks personally, where for uh where i live here because of the you know amount of cold i would just go 12 inches because that's that's what i that's what makes me happy <laughs> 12 inch thick bricks is what i would motor on to my dome in my cold climate area because i don't want to have any cold coming in because uh you know the concrete it's not like foam it's still a thermal bridge so that's why if you have a thicker thicker you know uh aircrete brick it's just going to be even better it's going to take even longer for it to act as a thermal bridge to come through having it thick and besides that you know you're going to have heat on the inside i would like that okay harry thank you how would an aircrete pump differ from a regular concrete pump uh or concrete well, there's a lot of different types of concrete pumps and so it depends on what type of pump you're using. Some concrete pumps will work for aircrete. The problem is with a lot of concrete pumps is the price. A lot of them are expensive. Even the machine I'm making is not cheap. It's going to be, you know, it might be in the eight to ten thousand dollar range. I'm not sure yet because I didn't get all my prices from the fabricator. I'm still. Uh, I have the pump. Uh, the pump transmission and motor setup. So I have the pump. Uh, I'm just getting a quote for the hopper and uh, and the mixer. And there'll be two different units. There'll be a hopper with the pump connected to it. And then there'll be a hopper mixer combo. And um, so anyway, both of those will be available uh, pretty soon. And they're going to make building so much faster and easier. Like, oh, my God. But anyway, um, yeah, there's a lot of different concrete pumps. So a lot of pumps will work for aircrete. My, my first pumping experiments in the beginning were to find a really cheap pump. What was the most inexpensive pump uh, I could find for aircrete? And, um, you know, that, I did a lot of experimenting. Uh, one experiment that I did was I used a, uh, a, a sewage pump or a sump pump and, um, I put it into a, a garbage pail filled with aircrete, trying to get it to suck the aircrete out and pump. And it didn't work because of the air bubbles, you know, it, it doesn't, uh, allow that type of pump to work. Uh, but someone, I don't know who it was, left a comment on one of my videos saying uh, about trying that pump upside down so that I'm so that you're pouring the aircrete into it. So I don't know if it would work, but that's something you can try. I know for sure what does work as far as pumps go and you can get it relatively inexpensive is a uh, diaphragm pump, a diaphragm pump, a minimum of one inch inlet outlet uh i say minimum one inch because that's all that i've used i don't know if something smaller would work i'm thinking it wouldn't work very well so i wouldn't get a smaller diameter but if you are making air crete and you want to pump now and you know obviously cost is a, an issue uh you can go to um you know this is something else i'll put a link also on my amazon but you can go to amazon and look up diaphragm pump you want to get a double diaphragm pump and um, i know for sure one inch inlet outlet double diaphragm pump will work for aircrete um but what i'm making is is uh something a little different see the the, the, the diaphragm pump doesn't work for my epic mix 
and and that's why I don't like it um because I'm I'm using a lot of different types of cements for my build and remember for me Aircrease started about building inexpensively and um so it's not a big deal that you know I go from Aircrete to Epic or even to wood cement my whole goal is to find the least expensive and easiest materials to use and build with so uh, aircrete is the easiest out of all of them because you don't need anything but the portland cement and a, a foam generator uh, the others depending on your location may be really good i give an example i have a sawmill not not too far from me that i could get tons of sawdust and so I could use sawdust as an aggregate for my cement. And I can have, you know, wood cement. And there's videos of people making really strong bricks and it's insulative. So I, I do plan to do a lot of different experiments with that as well. But I'm very open to a lot of different inexpensive methods that are super strong. Like I love aircrete. But I give you an example. The Epic is far stronger than the Aircrete. And I'm sure it has about the same amount of insulative properties. So why not go stronger if you can? So since I can, I'll go stronger. But again, if you're in an area where it's hard to get styrofoam and you can make Aircrete bricks easy, then do that. You know, whatever works easiest for your location. What kind of windows do you want to use? I've decided that I'm only going to have skylights uh, because regular windows like, you know, almost 100% of the homes out there all have reflective lighting for the majority, for the most part. It's reflective lighting. It's light that bounces off the ground or bounces off of whatever and then goes into your window. So you get light. But if you want a really good light, you got to get a skylight. Because with a skylight, you got direct sunlight going straight into your house. And so, as oh, I didn't realize my screen just zoomed in. So as an example, with this dome, uh, this is going to be my pantry dome. So this dome here will have no windows at all because I, I want it to stay cool. It's going to have a really thick insulative layer. And again, the idea is that this dome stays cool to keep all my food go, uh, <laughs> my food goods, my food goods, uh, you know, nice and cool. Uh, but the rest of the domes are going to have skylights on top. And um, there's going to be a ton of light. And the other thing I like about that is I'm going to get maximum strength. I don't have to worry about any animals uh human or bears or anything you know breaking the window and getting in because we do have uh bears out here in fact just the other week i saw mama bear with uh two cubs and um it's a real legit you know threat out here bears no joke there's a uh, uh about three months ago now there was a, a horse killed i don't know if the mountain lion took it out. i'm thinking the mountain lion killed the horse and the rest of the animals finished it off. And it was only about 200 steps from from my front door. But, um, yeah, as far as windows, originally I was thinking of getting, you know, uh, arch windows. And the uh, there would be augments, little pop-outs that would, you know, pop out. And um, then I could put my window there. Uh, but now... Uh, for the majority of the domes, I'm only going to have a skylight. Now, for my uh, bedroom dome, which which would be, you can't see it, but it would be where that scaffolding is. The bedroom dome would be there. That will have a window so that I have the view of the mountains out my window. So it'll have a skylight and it'll have, you know, a regular window. But um, I don't. You know, when I was thinking about it, when I did the design originally from for the house, I had a, I had every dome had at least one window on it, and um, after I was thinking about it, so why do I, I don't need windows to look at these trees? You know, I don't. This is not the view. There's just trees there, 
And that would just be reflective light getting in. The dome light is uh, the uh, skylight. I said dome because it's going to be a, a dome-shaped skylight. But my uh, skylight is going to give me better light than a standard window will give you. And um, I'm also planning on making like a, an iris, you know, from a camera. I have some idea to make my own iris to uh, be able to shut the light out from the skylight. I can open and close it. Uh, I was just thinking about that yesterday. So, um, yeah, so that's that's the deal. So I've decided there's not going to be any traditional windows, which is going to make this building method easier. And also, um, the way I'm going to build this is going to be exactly the way you could build it if you were going to bury it. Because you could put a skylight and have a ton of light in a house that's under the ground. You know, there's not going to be any difference once inside. You wouldn't know if you were underground or outside because the only light will come from a skylight. Now, the skylight in my larger, uh, the living room, I'm looking to get a six or eight foot diameter clear dome skylight. So it's going to be like a, you know, a contact lens. I want it to be perfect, clear contact lens type of skylight. And, um... I haven't found it yet. The biggest one I found, I think, was a, a, a five foot uh, diameter. But I'm looking for a six to eight foot for the living room because the living room's gonna have a loft. And and the the real vision for me, because out here is so beautiful, especially at, at night. Well, it's it's beautiful all all you know day and night. <laughs> but at nighttime, you can see the Milky Way. Uh, but what I envision is being in the living room dome, uh, in the loft area where there'll be a circular uh, couch with the skylight there. And I'm thinking like if the skylight could be at shoulder level so that when you're sitting on the couch, you're just looking out and, but you're nice and comfortable on the inside. So when it's raining or snowing or nighttime, I, I just can't wait. To do that I, I just you know i just see that's the visual i have uh but i have to find the skylights uh for most of the skylights i'm thinking probably like a, a two foot diameter would be more than enough uh to let you know more than enough light in the insides will probably just be painted you know very light color to bounce the light around but um i'm thinking you know uh two or three foot diameter skylights for most of the domes and the larger living room would be six to eight foot diameter skylight that's the idea guys I, I haven't found these things yet and i have no idea how much they are yet the price could change everything drastically and depending on the price i might just put one of those glass bricks on the top and that'll be it <laughs> uh true tech yes What's this? Uh, what's Stockhell Wire? Wire? Blah, blah, excuse me. What was he talking about? I have no idea how to spell it. I have no idea what the question is. Um, Aircrete bricks could be a business. Uh, definitely, it's uh, uh, it is something I, I plan to get into in the future. I have to get past uh, the house first. Uh, thinking of doing that EMT conduit geodesic dome and welding up some angle tabs, the EMT for making panels. Just a thought. Love what you're doing. Um, an EMT geodesic dome. Yeah, I'm sure it'll work. The geodesic domes are, you know, super strong and, you know, it's just for me the the time it would take to cut all your tubing and and put the ends on, um, and uh, and build it. You know, because it doesn't get its full strength until it's fully assembled. Um, in my opinion, this is just a faster uh, way of building. Uh, I have considered. I did consider also a geodesic dome for a greenhouse, um, but that idea has changed also. I'm thinking I'm just even for a greenhouse, 
I may just do a structural shell with a bunch of, you know, window ports to put uh, glass domes in it. Because then I'll get the strength of the concrete still and, you know, you can have those, uh, the, all the openings can be reinforced with uh, skylights can go into for a greenhouse. So that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, have any engineers contacted you? Yeah, I had, uh, I think, two people. Definitely one. Yeah, one guy said he can do engineering plans for me. And that's fine because I'm, I'm going to want to have some done for an, another project somewhere else. So I'm going to need engineering plans for that. But, you know, my main goal is to get engineers for everybody out there. So I'm going to need engineers from all the states, you know, because uh, unless you get an engineer who's got a license, in all the different states um but i want everybody to be able to you know find the engineer quickly if they wanted to build this this method so i i have this house has all been engineered and i have the engineering plans and building permits so everything's good to go here i'm trying to get it done for everyone else out there and unfortunately the engineer that i had doing mine uh doesn't feel comfortable to do this system for everybody and anybody so i'm trying to see if maybe you know the engineer i do find would would give the plans to people who who come here for a workshop because then at least they could feel secure knowing that you know you've learned how to build it uh using this method anyway uh keith hudson says nice true tech says i dig the way you inflate to get the dimensions accordingly. Yeah, the other thing I use is is that leaf blower. And that was an idea I got from uh, Dave. And uh, it was a really good one I enjoyed. Uh, hey, Harry, I'm a man in Vancouver, Canada. I've been watching you pioneer creep for a long time. You're an inspiration. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, and dome shapes are ideal for weather. Uh, yeah, especially, I don't understand why it's not done at this point. How many, how many times do the homes, the trailers and regular houses on, uh, tornado alley got to be destroyed before they say, Hey, let's just build domes and never, ever have to worry about tornadoes again. You know, at least not about their house. You still got to get in the house. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the domes have been proven to be the best. Harry, could one spray hempcrete on the inside for insulation? Uh, I think if you're gonna, I mean, hempcrete, hempcrete is insulative in itself. That's why it's, 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 uh, it's being used because it's, uh, you, you're usually making these 12 inch thick, uh, walls using you know hemp and some type of uh some type of cement mix and um you know not necessarily cement like i think they use lye i never made hempcrete but um i think hempcrete alone is already insulative um but yeah you could do anything you wanted to i, I don't think you would really be gaining much by doing any aircrete on the inside of a hempcrete wall um, if anything, maybe just a regular plaster so that you have a little thermal mass. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't really suggest any aircrete on a, on a hempcrete wool. Uh, maybe mixing aircrete with to make the actual hempcrete. You know, mix your, your hemp fibers with aircrete. Uh, that would be good. You know, obviously the wood the hemp fibers are going to pop a lot of bubbles, but there's still going to be enough. It'll still make a nice solid mass. So if you're, if you're thinking that, I think that would work. Uh, you can make a hempcrete block and fill it with aircrete or, or mix, you know, mix the hempcrete with aircrete and fill a block. Uh, I don't know, but you'd be pioneering that as far as I know. I don't know anyone who's done that yet. Uh, true tech normally domes require a ton of cutting and foam forming triangular frames yeah 
that's why the monolithic is uh, my preferred way because you inflate an air form and all your cement is sprayed on at the same time, you know, AKA monolithic. And so you have a stronger structure instead of even like one made of bricks that's mortared on. It's not going to be as strong as one that's sprayed on all at once, monolithically. <clears throat> um, uh, and I wanted to share with you a secret ingredient, corn syrup. Yeah, I know about the corn syrup. Um, I've never done the corn syrup, but when I was doing the foam experiments, um, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, a lot of people mentioned corn syrup. Oh, actually, no, I did use corn syrup once. Yeah, I did use corn syrup once and it made a small improvement. Um, but, um, what I think may work the best is, uh, baking soda in just regular dish detergent. If we're looking for the least expensive, easiest to, access you know uh to get this detergent super easy compared to having to order drexel so yeah if you wanted to do a quick experiment i think uh uh i think that's the thing and the reason you're adding the baking soda i got this idea from darwin the reason you're adding the baking soda is because it's going to neutralize the acids that's in the uh uh cleaning agents you know the cleaning agents, the dish soaps, have like a type of citric acid in there for cleaning. And so you want to neutralize the acid. So if you neutralize that acid with some baking soda, and we're talking about just a small like teaspoon amount in a five-gallon bucket with about 15 ounces of soap, 15 to 30 ounces, I don't know, it depends on the soap you're using. Uh, Schwab, I found... Uh, to work really good Schwab shampoo gave me the best foam out of all the cleaning soaps you know Dawn or 7th generation <clears throat> um, Schwab worked the best uh, clarifying shampoo and uh, I haven't done the experiment with the baking soda but it made all the sense in the world when I heard it so I'll try that if you guys want to do your own experiment do if you want to do an experiment for me right especially if you got one of my foam generators do a video filling a bucket up five gallon bucket up with with uh foam from uh, a, a dish detergent or, or shaving cream i mean um you know uh, sh uh shampoo and uh then do the same experiment but with a foaming agent that has the baking soda in it and then Leave the foam and see if one is, you know, stays stronger than the other. Uh, that's something I plan to do. But if somebody else wants to do it because you got the time, awesome. Send me the video and I'll, I'll put it on my channel if you want. That'll be cool. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, in Iran, a 500-pound bomb was dropped on a dome. The bomb only destroyed the inside, but the dome was still standing. Facts. Megalithic. Yeah. Uh, the domes are no joke. I, I know how to build a, uh, basically a bomb-proof dome. Uh, it can be, uh, I can build definitely a bulletproof bomb proof dome because of some experimenting that i did and um i got some some nice ingredients you know obviously the shell would be a lot thicker than an inch or two but uh it could definitely be bomb proof uh i don't know about military bombs but any any you know regular bomb i'm sure it could handle <laughs> um Hello, Harry. Do you necessarily need to use reinforcement for Epic? No, because the dome that I built last year, I didn't use uh, hardly any reinforcement. I, I used very little basalt because I only had a half a roll left of basalt fabric. Uh, but I could have built the whole dome without any reinforcement. Um, and it will stand. 
uh, again, for me, I'm building um, under my building permit, and I have to build under my structural engineering plans. So, but if you're building in a county with no building codes, and you can build whatever you want, then you could build with Epic with no reinforcement. Um, I really like reinforcement. And you should too, <laughs> because it's just going to give you more peace of mind that your structure is not going to cave in. And at a minimum, I like the stucco wire mesh. Uh, if if I were going to build an Epic uh, dome, I would do at least like three inches of Epic, then put the mesh on, and then do another three inches of Epic. The mesh is cheap enough. You only need maybe one or two rolls to to do something this size and um in the rolls like 40 bucks so for like 80 bucks to reinforce it with steel wire it's is way worth it and i would just highly suggest it uh, but to answer your question you can build an epic dome with no reinforcement because uh, the epic you know it's strong in itself the paper fibers is a type of reinforcement and if you want you could make epic stronger by adding perhaps basalt fiber chops into it uh, that would probably make it you know stronger uh, I like when he uses environmentally friendly and non non toxic soap like seventh generation yeah you know um a lot of a lot of uh, food products and uh, other things that are in concentrated form are actually toxic. So um, when we're building a structure like the Drexel foaming agent I use says toxic. Uh, but when you're diluting it so much like I am when I'm making the foam, it's not, it doesn't have the same level of, of toxicity. Toxicity. I'm not going to play with that word no more. And um, so, you know, I'm building the structure. And for me, the Drexel, which is supposed to be toxic in its concentrated form, I really don't know about its diluted form. But, you know, um, I agree. If you can, if you can get something, if you can uh, build use, using, you know, environmentally safe things, uh, then that's the ideal way to go. Uh, but I need, I need a lot of it. And, um, like, holy cow, I used 1200 gallons of air creed for this. And that was about, uh, 30 gallons of just foaming agent. Not even the water that I used to mix into the cement. Anyway, um, are you adding extra stir are you looking to survive a nuclear no i'm just um i just don't ever want to have to build a house again <laughs> that i'm gonna live in uh, i just want to do it right the first time and so it's crazy for me to if i'm building a house uh to not take an extra step that would make it you know so much stronger because you know stuff happens i'm out here a tree could fall on the house you know definitely there are fires that happen um i can honestly honestly say once the house is built i really wouldn't be concerned with anything i wouldn't be concerned with you know fires or hurricanes tornadoes you know bullets bombs not really bullets and bombs. I don't need that tested, but I, I definitely would feel way safer in this structure than a regular standard stick frame house. That's for sure. <laughs> um, do you use aircrete for the floors inside or concrete? Yeah. Uh, the aircrete I use for the slab, you know, my ring beam is concrete. So that's maximum strength because that's holding the weight of the dome up. So you want your ring beam, your foundation that the shell sits on to be maximum strength always. And uh, the inside of that, which is uh, my slab, is aircrete. And so um, the slab is aircrete 
And on top of that slab, I'm going to put PEX tubing. And on the PEX tubing, I'm going to cover with concrete about an inch or two inches thick. <clears throat> Okay, I seem to have lost connection. Don't know why. So I'll go back to <clears throat> go back to uh, some questions here. Let's see, where was I? Uh, hold on. I gotta scroll back to where I last was. I didn't realize there were so many questions here. I'm gonna have to get through these quicker. Okay. Um, holy cow. Hello, Harry, do you necessarily need to use? Okay, so, um, you study adding now, okay, do you, okay, for the floors, not for the floors, beautiful, thank you. It's because he works with Rounded shapes, that's why aircrete structurally stronger. Yeah, aircrete is stronger because of the dome shape. Uh, what are your plans for all the aircrete structures? Uh, I, I'm going to build them still. I still got tons of aircrete structures to build. Also, I'm uh, going to be working on forms for aircrete furniture. Um, uh, because, you know, right, regular furniture is, you know, like couches and everything. They're made with just sticks covered with foam and springs. So uh, I'm sure I could make lighter couches, for example, using aircrete and, um, and, you know, foam and fabric. And so anyway, that's an idea I have. I'm, I'm working on uh, doing some designs for that. Uh, I'm, I'm open for anybody who's got... You know who wants to work with me and do stuff you just send me an email uh thanks for your pointers harry looks like an awesome day to enjoy out there yes it is uh, space creed uh, and if you guys haven't seen space creed he's got this really um special formula he puts into his cement and uh holy cow like you could take regular cement mix it up and you could try to form it and it won't do anything. Then you mix this special ingredient up and then you can squish it together and it'll stay. Like, it's really cool. I have some big plans for uh, some stuff in the future once, once that stuff is available. It's still in testing phase, I think. Uh, if you make the dome like a sandwich and pot, pot the uh, concrete, in the middle i think yeah i do have a, a plan to do something like that uh, in other words um because i've tried the double air form system where i inflated two air forms and filled the inside with epic i did have that idea originally to fill the inside with aircrete but the weight of the cement especially the epic just bulged out the fabric so it wasn't uh, as strong as i hoped it would be because the, the idea for that was to do something quick uh, but now the new idea is i could do a thin shell uh thinner than this this is already like thick in comparison to the idea i'm about to say so i can do a thin shell uh, inflate an air form put the uh, fiberglass mesh coat the mesh with a coating uh, then put another air form that's larger over that, inflate that air form, do another thin shell, and then I would have a cavity. So I would have two cement shells on the outside and inside, and then I could fill the inside with aircrete for my insulation. That is a method I do plan to do uh, for a dome, uh, just not yet. But um, yeah, to, to your question, you could do that. Uh, it's interesting how even the foam bubbles are naturally rounded and how they geometrically link. Yeah, no, it's true. There's a lot of science that went around, you know, nature and those bubble shapes. Would a gypsum pump work for aircrete? I believe it would absolutely work for aircrete. Uh, hemp aircrete. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> Let's do it. Um uh, 
us has one standing structure left from the house built after the war and baby boom okay cool so you guys have a a structure still standing triangle shape windows join to make a larger five-sided window would look good with a inflated dome even i agree it would look really nice and uh some friends of mine up in uh, upstate new york uh their website is um uh haven for human no haven for human haven oh man i can't believe i'm haven haven i'm getting my name mixed up my name was so similar to theirs haven oh eh, i forget haven haven something upstate new york they got a, a geodesic uh dome and a geodesic greenhouse and uh I think they said for their window, their five-sided triangular shaped window was like five or fifteen thousand dollars. It was some crazy money for a window. Yeah. Um, if I could get away with like a few hundred dollars for a skylight, that'll make me happy. The epic is your mix. No, I didn't come up with epic. I, I made some improvements, but uh the uh, epic was uh, introduced to me by a guy named of Dave Pentington. He introduced me to epic, and um, from there I, I did. <clears throat> I took the recipe and uh, I pretty much have it almost as is. I made some other improvements, and um, I did some compression straight compression uh, test strength uh, test with. Uh, the epic mix that I got from Dave and the epic mix that I made. Well, it's no longer epic. As soon as you change any of the ingredients, the, the, the name changes. But either way, um, I have uh, some other cement mixes that I was able to make from the mix that I was introduced to. Uh, installing motion sensors and high pitch speakers that activate upon bear arrival yeah or you could get a dog the dogs work really good redefine living harry yeah redefine living uh irish shape are cool i agree and that's what i'm planning on making uh for my dome skylights uh fake windows that are 4k screens yeah that was a, a idea my buddy dan gave me um before and uh i'm thinking of doing that i think that'll be really cool even as just like a prototype to somebody maybe wanting to build one of these homes underground and um I, i'm curious to do that so yeah i would definitely get you know especially now the flat screens tvs are so cheap now you know you get a flat screen tv and and mount it vertically behind like a window frame and uh, i think that would be really cool and i do plan to do that uh air creep calculations uh oh no i'm sorry I, I read that wrong air circulations um air circulation uh, with the uh dome skylight i want to incorporate a vent so if i incorporate a vent in the top then the natural uh, thermic, you know, air action, thermal action that happens with the air will, uh, the heat will want to rise up. And I don't know if you've heard, but I mentioned I have a six inch corrugated tubing that's been buried. And so all of the domes will have a tube that goes into the dome that will supply fresh, cool air. And so that will be the circulation. It'll be a natural circulation because I have the cool air from the tubes that come in. And then I have the vent at the top of the skylight that would let, you know, air out. So I want to get a natural uh, circulation to avoid having to turn on any fans and blowers and things like, like that. Just, you know, to be more... Uh, energy conscious the country might uh the county might say you need a window for egress emergency evacuation yeah that's fine i mean there will be uh at least one window for sure in the bedroom uh 
Yeah, that a problem. I, you know, I, I have to look into the codes and and check it. Um, and if that's the case, you know, we'll we'll put a window or or some type of egress uh, thing. Maybe it doesn't need to be a window. Maybe maybe it could just be. Maybe like, for example, having a second entrance, you know, a second door to the house might comply with the code. So I have to look into that. But I'm glad you said it. Obviously, I'm nowhere near finished building, but uh, that's definitely something I'm going to look into. Uh, laugh out loud, glass break. Yeah, that's, you know, money, money, money. Uh skylight with high r value will be expensive and heavy yeah i don't necessarily need a skylight with a high r value i'd be happy with just you know a plexi or a lexan more most likely if if i could get a lexan uh dome that would be fine and um we're radiant floor heating you know i'm sure that'll be good enough heat heat's gonna rise so don't have to uh worry too much skylight glass blocks yeah ideally if i could get you know a, a, a nice glass <clears throat> glass skylight that would be good but otherwise i think probably the best option would be a lexan one so if i could find a lexan skylight because it's much stronger than plexiglass uh, that would be great you could make a telescope and turn a dome into an ob observatory. I do plan on doing that, Antonio. Uh, um, I, because the stars are amazing, I, I have my eye on this uh, nine-inch telescope. Uh, and, um, yeah, I want to get the telescope. And, obviously, if I do that, I, I have a whole idea of how I could watch the stars and still be warm in my uh, obser observatory and so yeah i do have a mind i have something in my i haven't drawn or anything out but i do have a mind to make an obser observatory for a telescope that i also have my eye on <laughs> and i'll probably make a, a channel for star and moon watching if i get that telescope what county are you in i'm in uh los Alamos county over here do you have Title 24 in Colorado? I don't know what Title 24 is. Uh, yeah, cheaper to try a thermal form, a curved skylight. Yeah, I just don't have the time to do that. Uh, it might be cheaper once you figure it out, but until you figure it out, you might have a lot of trial and error, and you could go through a lot of material practicing. Uh, <clears throat> there's a channel I, I used to watch I forget the name of it now. This custom car builder dude. I think his name was Ian. And he was from California. I forget the name of his show. And he built these bubble tops for cars. He made these custom cars. And he was making these bubble tops. And I saw him make a, you know, a rig, an oven. And I saw the way he made the bubble top. And I could duplicate what he did. But, you know, I'd still be doing trial and error. <clears throat> And uh, I'm not going to do that. I'd rather just buy one made already from someone. If you engineered it for IBC, it should be all... It, it should be good in all stage. <clears throat> um, yeah, not sure. Thank you for helping us all. You're welcome. Any suggestions for building an approved septic? Uh, you know, I'm, I think I'm going for a, um, bio digesting system. It's, uh, it really just makes sense because not only will it accept all of your food waste and animal waste and human waste, but then it makes gas that you can use to cook with. Uh, I saw this set up in Crestone, Colorado this year when I went to the energy fair this guy built this uh, bio digesting system and he has a commercial kitchen he rents out and the commercial kitchen runs off the biogas that he's making from all the animal and food waste 
And uh, he's got three big eight foot diameter, eight foot deep uh, tanks uh, that he's stuffing something like 250 pounds of waste a day into or something. But, um, you know, obviously you don't need to do anything near that size. But I'm thinking biodigesting system is maybe one of the best systems you can do because you're getting, you know, you're getting a, a highly concentrated fertilizer that you can use as well as the methane gas that you can cook with or i've seen videos of people using the gas to power a generator i think the ideal situation is just as a cooking gas but if you got enough of it you know you can use it for other things <clears throat> um tornado and hurricane zone should be yeah i agree uh compost toilet poop in plant containers and yeah there's a there's a video i'm gonna link when i'm done with this after i'm done talking if you guys come back later i'm gonna link a video a youtube video to a guy who makes uh he makes uh, uh like a composting tea he makes some kind of tea that you put in compost and it helps the compost break down you know it helps composting action happen in 21 days opposed to three months or something Anyway, it's a really good video. So I'm going to link that video here. Uh, floodplains to as the material dries out without having to be replaced. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so if a human waste needs to be removed, pathogens, yep. Couch surfer, thanks. So a septic is not mandatory. Harry, I acquired acquired a copy of the original land patent from my property. Soon I'll file my claim and I will no longer need a building permit. Yeah, listen, uh, Ralph, send me information on that. I'm definitely interested in that. Um... Yeah, because I don't want to have to worry about building permits either. William, what's up, William? Are you planning an Air Creek workshop next year? Yes, definitely. I'm <clears throat> going to have... Uh, it's not going to be an Air Creek workshop. It's just going to be a dome building workshop. And everything that I use will be in involved in it. So there'll be Air Creek, Epic, Latex, Cement, and, and everything else. <clears throat> So it'll be even better than an, an aircrete only workshop. Uh, Peter West, every county is different. Check with your county. Harry, the lime and herd from the hemp plants becomes mineralized time replacing the Portland. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, could you cut fiberglass insulation fibers into about four inch strips and mix into aircrete to strengthen the mixture? I'm sure uh that will work <clears throat> for sure if you do fiberglass in layers it'll make it even stronger it's kind of like that trick with sand i don't know if you've seen it but you can make a pile of sand stronger by putting strips of for example fiberglass in between layers of sand uh, and it makes it way stronger so something like that with aircrete would probably work how big a brick can you make from a single 60 pound bag of ready mix insulation? How big a brick? I, I'm not sure how big a brick you can make. <clears throat> I think you should get a bag and make a brick. <laughs> Let me know. A, what's this? A, tr a tribute toilet? A sliding panel opens at the bottom wall, then it launches the media through the air <laughs> okay only problem is it's all my land here it's all my property so i'd be launching it onto my property uh does air creek block emf similar to adobe i don't know uh, i have emf equipment i have equipment to test for emf um, but i've not built a purely air creek structure and test it uh, if EMF frequencies can penetrate. Uh, how long 
Have you lived in Trinidad and where are you from originally? Originally from New York, Trinidad for a year, a little over a year. <clears throat> I think he is in California, Colorado. Uh, easy tell, yes, it does. Okay, I know a dome is the best design and what and would be some challenges in building a Quonset structure. Um, I don't think there would be any challenges. I think you could build a, a Quonset structure just fine. It would work great. Um, you know, you'd still have to do a roof the same way. You'd have to use wood beams, you know, to support the roof. But uh, definitely all the walls. Listen, you remember this too. When you're building with aircrete, you know, it has less compressive strength. But um, it depends on the mix you're mixing. You know, you could do a dense mix of aircrete and get a lot more compressive strength. So you could technically make aircrete columns of a, of a denser mix to be your support columns for your rafters or for, you know, your beams, if you know, for a Quonset hut. Um, and then have just aircrete walls to fill in the space in between your, your beams. So there's a lot of ways to build with air crete and there's a lot of mixes and i will be showing a lot more next year with just the air crete uh structures been growing roses for years uh could even cut one in half then build a square or triangle shaped structure uh there you are back hello fellow domers from nd uh damn harry that looks good thank you Harry, I acquired the original patent for my property. Okay. Um, you're saying patent. Yeah, you need to share some more information with me on that. Because I never heard of a property being um, patented. I know, for example, my property, we don't have... Uh, no one in this area has the mineral rights to the property like you own the land but we don't have the rights to the minerals here uh so i don't really know enough about all that stuff congrats been following your vids thank you uh, oh good deal ralph make sure you follow proper procedure it's tricky you need to have the okay domes for the homeless 10 by 6 i'm all for it um couch surfer my buddy damon who who was here uh for a workshop last year he's doing uh he wants to do floating homes for the homeless he's got a large property a big lake and um big body of water or lake i don't know what it is but uh, he wants to do floating uh houses floating domes for people uh for the homeless so um you check back on this video later and i'm going to put the link to his uh website on here as well <clears throat> um safe room is a lot cheaper than a safe house they'd make a very cool garage edition do it private side that uh special ingredients rock that fell out zero slump concrete yeah um zero slump concrete exists now with the space creek guy i don't know if that's why you know about zero slump concrete um we need to find out if we can make zero slump air creek that would be the bomb uh there is a substance called concrete fabric that can be used to make furniture yeah but that stuff i don't know about the cost um and i've seen how it looks and i uh, i don't think um i i wouldn't want to use that that's actually a lot thicker than would be needed to make the furniture and for me the idea i have is um the exterior of the furniture would be a hard concrete and the interior would be all aircrete to be really lightweight <clears throat> um, can you use any materials if done right I'm not sure exactly what you, what's meant by that question, Clint. Uh, thermal mass sulfur. Yeah, I mean, 
I'm also planning on building a rocket stove. And so I want to have a rocket stove mass heater. And so uh, a thermal mass sofa is it's right up my alley. <laughs> Build shell, soak sheets in concrete place as a starting shell. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways of doing. Uh, a lot of people have sliding glass doors on their homes and would like a half home to add it to. Yeah, the structure is similar to poor man's fiberglass. Hell yeah, hemp aircrete is what I would like to see. <laughs> My goal is to build a hemp aircrete. Hard to source materials here currently. Bug proof building, Harry mix. I fell out. 50% uh, savings on cement cost. Uh, curved flat screen. Yeah, I would like a curved flat screen. That'd be cool. Uh, grow, dome grow house. Yeah, definitely. I'm planning on dome grow house. The, uh, let me see. That's, in fact, the dome, this one here is, is planned to be my dome grow, my grow dome, uh, where I'll be growing microgreens. Everyone asked me if I want to grow weed. Maybe, but this is about growing food. And so this here is actually going to be the grow, my grow dome. And this one here that's going to be here is going to be uh, my office dome. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, you can use aircrete for flooring. Oh, he's answering one of the other questions. Okay, cool. I have three types of cheapo sewing machines. Um, yeah, good. Sewing machines, if you're making your own air forms. Project Skylight, four from four inches and five inch hell. Um, oh, Protect Skylight. Yeah, um, yeah, that's why I like the idea of the Lexan because the Lexan, a Lexan Skylight could easily handle the impact of, um, Hail and stuff. Uh, 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 acrylic one, um, plexiglass, I think there's a good chance it could break. There's there's also a chance it could stay just fine because of the dome shape. Um, so, yeah, that's something else I still have to find out about. I should practice cutting and sewing. Yeah, definitely. Just like a, a baseball cap. It's a dome. Right, so you can uh, make your own baseball cap if you want to practice sewing dome shapes. Um, cover with water house within the dome and have solar, wind, hot water generator. Yeah, listen, I got a ton of ideas that I want to implement. I got to get the house built first because I got solar hot water heaters. I got geothermal energy I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm definitely going to be doing wind. Uh, obviously, I have solar ready, uh, earth battery, earth generator I want to try, and a bunch of other good stuff. Um, apply a nano silica protective layer. Yeah, I have, uh, I got some stuff I haven't even mentioned yet. Some really, some really cool stuff uh, I've been experimenting with. And uh, it's one of the coatings that would actually go on. A thin coating will go on to this before the insulative coating goes on. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll be showing that later in an experiment. Yes, possibly to ICF as ICF has farms and base in place. Harry is working on the air form. It's different process completely. Uh, protect composting system from freezing heater. Yeah, composting. Um... I have an idea to make a bunch of different uh, solar hot water heaters to uh, heat up different things, like to have one on my water tank even, and uh, to have a solar hot water heater system for each dome so I can have a valve so that when the sun is out, you know, during the winter, I can heat the floors up using the sun instead of uh, propane gas. And uh, anyway, I got a bunch of different ideas I'm looking to implement. 
A balloon from rubber could be made, perhaps. See, you could do rubber. It depends on the type of material, but it might stretch too much. Uh, I'm not sure. Yes to bile digester. I agree. Your grounds is too hard, Harry. Yep, that is for sure. I want to build these as ADUs and possibly storm shelters. Um... Um, the ADU acronym is escaping my mind, but storm shelters for sure. Uh, thermal ceiling and edges inside of sewing might prove useful. Um, not really. Uh, the, the thermal ceiling, the edges instead of so oh, I mean, I say not really because I don't think the Tyvek house wrap material can be thermal sealed. So, uh, but if you're using vinyl or, well, mainly if you're using vinyl, definitely, uh, using the thermal to the thermal heat to seal it would be better than sewing, but this is not vinyl. Love and appreciate all the info and knowledge. You're welcome, Storm Singer. Uh, True Tech. When I woke in canvas shop, heat up weld seams. Yep, and <clears throat> the welding is works good for seams. Uh, depends on material, heat welding canvas. I'm trying to get through these texts a little quicker than I have been. I see a lot of you guys are answering each other. Um, different materials. Uh, Flash melting, blah, 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 cubic foot bag size. Cubic foot bag size. Um, I have uh, one cubic yard bags that I hold the styrofoam in. I don't know what else that question is referring to. I uh, have to experiment. Never played with Tyabic that way. A heated bearing roller setup. Yes, it would help EMF insulation. With proper air creep materials, you can throw a coat of aluminum paint on EMF regulator. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I thought about actually coating one one of the domes in aluminum foil and in uh, copper foil uh, just to make a completely EMF proof structure. And um, I don't know. I think the idea I have was uh, it was more for being in the city because there's so much electromagnetic waves out here i barely even have a cell phone signal without my booster so don't really need it much out here but if you're living closer to a city or close to anything that's outputting a lot of emf then um, covering with some kind of aluminum paint or aluminum foil or something i think would stop any frequencies from penetrating Yes, exactly, Harry. I don't know <laughs> what that is to uh, <clears throat> what I said. Um, what else? Harry Land Patent is on PVT side, not public. On um, private side, not public. Okay. Uh, it's still new to me. Never heard about it. I bought a letter size sheet of metal for insulation experiments lots of details you acquire land pan instead of deed oh okay you get a land pan instead of the deed <clears throat> i don't know land pan sounds more secure than a deed because i know you could still lose your home from a deed uh yes floating homes for toronto to end homeless other cities at waterfronts too yeah, I, I was thinking about the floating home. I was thinking about uh, Damon's idea. And um, I was looking at some videos on floating homes. And I have an idea for a floating home. It'll be a sphere. The um, The base is, uh, is round. It'd be a, a round concrete structure. You know, it'd be half a sphere, basically. And, and then a lighter weight. Uh, thin shell concrete on top and uh, anyway 
I, I got a whole idea for how to make it, but it, it, it requires making the mold first to pour the concrete basement or the hole. <laughs> Uh, let us know what you find, please. Floating house. I'm in. Oh, cool. couch surfer. That explains the the name couch surfer now. <laughs> I'd love to see some pictures of your floating house, uh, couch surfer. That's uh that would be cool. I uh, I nudge politicians to consider innovations to housing. Yeah, that's definitely what's needed. The politicians need to implement some kind of bill that lets everyone's hands, uh, unties everyone's hands and allows us to build alternative stuff without all the tons of regulations. We must have innovative habitat for humanity. Yeah, I agree. You're thinking like me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip this around. Let's see. I'm just turning the phone so I could take some of the glare off my screen. Uh, Self insulation is very helpful, especially for super low income people or to make uh, care for them most affordable. Yeah, and that's why Aircrete and, and the Epic are so good because they're inexpensive. You can build a structure for them. They're they're insulative and all the other good stuff. Life a la Harry is about living independently. Yeah. Plexiglass weakens in sunlight. That's good to know. I didn't know it weakened. I know it discolored. Uh but yeah, if it weakens, I'm definitely going to be looking towards the uh, the Lexan sheets then. Uh, sky ice, large hell, protects off. Uh, okay. There's more expensive types of, of Plexi that are okay with UV. Yeah, I would imagine that too. They have UV coatings that are on the stuff. True tech. Why am I thinking air hempcrete? <laughs> uh, can grow on materials, hemp fibers, and add a type of rebar. Yeah, the hemp fibers are super strong, man. Uh, excellent, Harry Tyvek is a breathable layer in walls. It It is a breathable layer, but uh, Tyvek is not left in. The domes that I'm building, the Tyvek is removed afterwards. After the dome has been constructed, the Tyvek is peeled off and removed. It's possible to actually paint the dome to become a solar panel. That would be really cool. Waterproofing, not vapor barrier. Uh, you can even create electric heaters that are simply conductive paint on walls. You know, I would love to try all those wild sounding ideas out. Uh, but I would love even more for someone else to do it first. Because I've been doing experiments for a long time. And the thing about doing experiments is you got to fl flip the bill for everything. <laughs> it's my experiment. I got to spend all the money. Uh, why? <clears throat> Ways to be super cheap and get optimum results. That's it. That's what I'm about. True Tech Robert Murray Smith channel. Okay, I'll check that out later. Covered dome with solar panels. Um, I like the idea of that. Um, I would like some like uh, octagon shaped solar panels, just because I think that would look a lot cooler, and you'd be able to, you know, fit the dome shape like that. Uh, but that hasn't been invented yet, so. We're going to keep the imagination to the side for now. <laughs> Ground stakes to discharge lightning, static, electricity charges. Yeah, I agree. Ground stakes for sure. Because I'm into grounding. Also, I have uh, grounding bed sheets. You know, that's hooked up to ground. So, uh, grounding is a good thing. 
Life Allow, sorry, Harry. I'm listening live and commenting and answering questions. Keep up the great work. No problem, Clint. Uh, I'm trying to get through. Holy cow, it's been an hour 36 minutes already. Um, and I thought I was going to be on here for like 15 minutes. Go shopping for chemicals. Some of you can make from scratch, bro. When when it's the dome, you will want one hydrofoil style. <laughs> Some hydrofoil style dome. Yeah, that would be wild. Uh, beautiful countryside, Harry. Use uh, to live down that way. Also over by Grand Junction. Cool. Yeah, this is definitely a beautiful hair area. Hey, Harry, greetings from Argentina. All right, greetings back. Uh, mom was in occupation. I have jokes from UV treatment and treating. Oh, cool. Some UV stuff. That's interesting. I never thought about applying my own UV treatment to something. That's uh, something to think about. I will change the shipping industry with the air. Queen Harry, train on water. Train on water, huh? <laughs> That's actually the idea I had. The train on uh, uh, aircrete houses on the water being pulled. Um, couch surf, for life, I love it. 15 minutes. Yeah, come on, Harry. <laughs> Check out crystal batteries. Um, Hey, Harry, if I did air create a basalt mesh between two layers of rapid set concrete, can they all cure together or will or wait between layers? And you're going to have to wait between layers. And um, you want to use um, concrete bonding adhesive in between layers just for maximum adhesion. <laughs> definitely a bonding agent between your layers or just mix it into your cement i researched that stuff about battery uh composting fascinating yep i didn't seem to be able to source much styrofoam in my area did you ever find a source for eps beads to buy yeah well i didn't actually find a source myself but i was told you can buy from companies styrofoam beads and um um but i never found out how much it would cost and if you did buy styrofoam from a company and had a ship to you then you'd probably want to buy as much as you could just to make up for the shipping cost you know um So rebar is thinking growing types of crystal power storage frequency capture working on getting foundations set up for this paperwork takes time yep <clears throat> sure does um but anyway uh that's it guys i'm gonna let you go um I'm, I'm gonna do this again maybe next week i got a bunch of ideas i'm just gonna i'm just gonna have some diarrhea in the mouth next time I'm just going to say so many different things you guys might never heard of, but at least I'll just get it out there. I'll just say the information. You guys can research stuff yourself. I just because of time, you know, I just don't have the time to do everything I want to do. But holy cow, do I have some stuff in mind? And, and I'm hoping by the end of next year, I'm going to have my dome building house kit. Uh, I've already started putting together a kit for building a house off grid. So it's the the it's the get out of get the hell out of the city house kit. <laughs> and so basically, I'm putting together a trailer with every single thing you need, minus the cement and a couple other things you can get locally. But everything you would need, including tools, to build a dome. The way I'm building. So basically, the idea is you're in the city, uh, shit has hit the fan, like it has already a few times, and uh, you want to get out and, and live somewhere else. You can buy a piece of property, grab this trailer, move out, 
and within a week or two build a house that you can move into i mean everything from solar system to the air forms to the pump mixer system like it's a whole entire kit for off for someone who wants to build a house off grid anyway that's going to be the last thing I'll, I'll say i'll catch you guys all right all right all right before i go let me just look at these last questions harry can inform you more of the land okay i want to know more about land patents uh, i'll share information once i get it thanks harry you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome many blessings and gratitude harry and family thank you uh true tech haha haha back to you <laughs> you rock harry thank you thank you for the blessings uh i move country away from yes we don't need the authorities harry one reason air Korea is weak is much weaker seven gallons per sac where aggregates no I, oh, <clears throat> trust me I, I know the uh the less water the better and that's actually my domes have virtually no water in fact i think i could say the domes have no water in it the domes i'm building only have latex and super plasticizers there's hardly any water at all um uh, all right peace out everybody let me see how do i end this <clears throat> let me click on that button